I thought it was great. I thought it was great. This has, uh, this has beaten a lot of my expectations. Uh, I loved, absolutely, 100% loved the intro, loved the, like, the old 1950s back in the day as the nukes were going off. Seeing the Mr. Handy there, loved sort of the color scheme of the costumes of the blue, the blue and the yellow. Um, I just love that that just like, it fits, it fits with the vibes. The music was great. We transitioned into, um, uh, Vault 33. Loved all of the, the Vault 33, Vault Tech, uh, Vault Dweller, uh, scenes. Loved those. Those I think were my favorite part. Because that's what I love about the game so much, is being able to explore the whole world. And, like, the world's great. Post-apocalyptic downtown Washington, California, uh, Mojave uh, Wasteland, desert. Uh, going into Boston, Commonwealth was like, that was, like, pretty cool. But I love the vaults. The vaults are just, there's so much lore. They're so kitschy. They're so themed up with, like all the vault tech iconography, like all of the posters. Remember we had one stream 10 years ago um, where we were exploring a vault and there's a phone number on the wall and we like phoned the phone number and it all worked. Um, so like absolutely love exploring the vaults and seeing all of that. And if you go and watch other YouTube channels who have done like, you know, they'll pause on a frame and they'll do frame by frame this scene in a vault and this scene from the video game, like TV from the vault, video game from the vault. And like they have done, they've fully replicated everything, even down to there's like these really particularly shaped bolts in the walls. Um, and the TV show got the same shaped funny bolts. Uh, and so it's like down to how they're constructing all of these sets is like pretty much identical to what we've been playing in all of the games, which is just loved that. So I love seeing all of those um, those nuances in the vaults and the posters and the costumes. That was great. Yeah, like that that was so great. Brotherhood. I, I've said it for years and I'm going to keep saying it. I don't care about the Brotherhood. I don't care about your mission, whatever it is. They're too stuffy, stuffy, uptight for me. <laughs> that, was, that was a word. That was a word. Um... So I already was not looking forward to, you know, the show is focused on three main characters. You've got the ghoul, you've got Lucy, the vault dweller who's emerging, and you've got the whole Brotherhood of Steel Maximus uh, quest line, uh, storyline there. I was not, I was not looking forward to any of that stuff. Like that, I guess, met up to my expectations. I'm not into army types of scenarios. I don't really like the scribes to the knights to the whatevers to the whatevers and the lore of the Brotherhood of Steel. I think to me it all looked fine. Um, like the costumes look fine, the bases look fine, the power armor look fine. That's just not, that's not my vibe. I don't love those. I actually kind of like in uh, New Vegas how there is no Brotherhood at all. There's n Maybe that's why I like New Vegas the best. There is no Brotherhood at all. Right? Sorry. There is, but the Brotherhood has been confined to a bunker hidden away in the middle of nowhere and they're all like, we can't go outside because, you know, we're going to get attacked. Nobody likes us. And it's like, yeah, we don't like you. We don't like you, Brotherhood of Steel. My opinion. My opinions only. So, um, uh, you know, I'm not looking forward to, in theory, a third of the show being about uh, the Brotherhood of Steel, but like, we'll get, we'll get through. With that, um, the scene at the end with the ghoul, I think that was kind of cool. It was nice to sort of see how they introduced him into the show. Uh, like I said, show has me three main characters plus dog meat. Uh, so we'll see. We will see a whole lot more of the ghoul. He has so much story and so many years. So we saw him in the beginning in the intro. He was the guy on the horse. He was the cowboy on the horse riding off. Something happened to him after the nukes were dropped that he turned into a non-feral ghoul and he lived out those 219 years between the intro and then, then the later scenes that we saw. So he's got a whole wealth of experience and stories for us to learn about. And that's why I wasn't really surprised when he like took on those three dudes, no problem. It's like, yeah, the guy's superhuman. He's over 200 years old. He's probably like worked out a bunch. Was the show predictable? I mean, it's kind of what we expected, right? We knew something was going to happen in the vault. 
that was going to cause Lucy to leave the vault. Loved, absolutely loved, 10 out of 10, 100 out of 10, loved how stupid it is that, yeah, of course, it's Lucy's father has exited the vault and we need to go find him outside of the vault. Because like I said, when we, when we were watching it, that's exactly how it happens in Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. Exactly how that happens. Um, and so the second that it kind of dawned on me, like, oh, wait, they're going to take the dad out and the daughter's going to go find the dad. I was like, wait, this is, of course, predictable. Yes. Is it, but it was a genius. Also, yes. So I, I actually, I'm pretty happy with this first episode. It feels very fallout. Okay. And like, you might say, well, obviously, like, okay, but see me now, see me for the past hour and 28 minutes of watching this episode. Okay. And then think back to me playing Starfield and how disappointed I was from the get-go playing Starfield. Okay. Starfield did, did not do this. Starfield did not live up to the hype, did not make me excited. Um, and this just makes me feel like, like, oh my gosh, it's like we have a new Fallout game. But it's not a game. It's, it's a TV show that we get to go watch. And I loved it. I loved it.